Tim Newton. The Purdue Boilermakers knocked off Florida Atlantic last Saturday night, 28-26 in homecoming 2022 to even the record to 2-2 two two on the season. Now it's back to Big Ten play starting this week. The month of October will be a busy one on the road for Purdue with three of its next four games away from home, away from ross Aid Stadium, and the start will start this Saturday as the Boilermakers head up to Minnesota to take on the Golden Gophers, a noon Eastern time kickoff. Good evening, everybody, from walk-ons in the Purdue Memorial Union. It is the Jeff Brom Show. We'll be talking with the head coach about Boilermaker football until the top of the hour. You can get your questions by phone at 888-246-2678. You can also watch us tonight on Facebook on the Purdue Athletics page. Let us know where you're watching from and if you have a question for the coach. On Twitter, you can follow us tonight and watch us on the Purdue football Twitter page. Along with the head coach, we're going to be talking later on tonight with running back Dylan Downing and also linebacker Jacob Wahlberg. We'll have the head coach with us next. It is the Jeff Brom Show, presented by the Rorman Automotive Group on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. And now here's Bird. This is his game. Here's an option flip. And is Downing. And Downing down the sideline. And Downing with a big run. Now you're motioning, motioning out to empty. Look at what that's doing to the FAU defense. It's forcing them to communicate and be, get them on their heels. On third and four, towards the end zone. That's in for six. Touchdown, Charlie Jones. And the Boilermakers are on the board. This is just my guy on your guy. Nothing, nothing too crazy about this. Just an out route. Is this four down territory here for FAU on third and ten? Just me. Let's see what play call they go with. Set up the screen in traffic. That's Western. He is popped immediately by Jamari Brown. Seven seconds to go, and with that, Purdue is one and two instead of possibly three and zero. Oh. And now here is Downing with a great run. Downing down the sideline. He's out of bounds near the forty. On first down, wide open is Mockaby. Well designed play, and Mockaby is shoved down near the thirty. Sometimes you just want to throw it to a big body. Second down, Burton looking for the end zone. You got to take advantage of this field position in these penalties if you're Purdue. It's Downing up the middle. Downing driving for the goal line, and he's in. Touchdown, Purdue. Against the Gophers. On first and goal. Nothing there for Mobley. No holding, no DPI. On third and goal, Perry hit into traffic, deflected and intercepted. Here comes Jefferson again. Jefferson did this against Penn State. Jefferson still up and wrapped up at the 35-yard line. Bringing in some extra beef, a 300-pounder to go with Payne Durham. Towards the back of the end zone, and that is caught for a touchdown. What a catch by T.J. Shippey. Back to the Jeff Brom Show. We're live at Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. We have the head coach with us. And, uh, Jeff, anytime you get a victory, no matter how big or how small, it's something to be celebrated. And the Boilermakers won their homecoming game this year. Uh, you had to overcome some injuries, including at the quarterback position. And I thought for a first-time starter, Austin Burton acquitted himself pretty well Saturday night. Yeah, we were very proud of Austin. I thought he came in and uh, really performed uh, – very well for having played in a while and uh, you know, he did a good job leading the team uh, made a couple of plays with his feet uh, some touchdown passes and, and did a good job so I think uh, that uh, you know the other team knew that we had to you know pick up a little bit and, and do a little bit better and, and while it wasn't a perfect game by any means uh, they did fight to the end and we found a way to win it's been a long time since you had more rushing yards in a game than passing yards, and part of that was due to Dylan Downing and the offensive line. We'll have Dylan with us a little bit later, but you've talked about the transformation that he's had from one year to the next, lost some weight, got himself a little bit more mobile, and he's been a big addition to your offense. Without question, he's really helped. Uh, he's really improved uh, since he came here as a transfer. Uh, you can see the hard work he's put in. You know, He cares. It means something to him. Uh, and he has uh, done a very good job. And I think he just understands what we're doing. He uh, can block. Uh, he's got some physicality to him. He's increased his speed because he has lost some weight and gotten in better shape. And I just think that, uh, you know, he's running at the count on him. We've had King hurt uh, throughout the entire year. And uh, that position right now is, is really, you know, his to run with. And Devin uh, will continue to improve. And then uh, the transfer, Kobe Lewis, will continue to improve as well. 
You had to make a change at right tackle. Cam Craig was out for you Saturday night. And Daniel Johnson, we've talked about the depth on the offensive line, a kid that came in from uh, Kent State, transfer from there, and, and it seemed like he played pretty well the first time out. You know, a great young man. He's, he's got a great personality, gets along with everybody. He's came here with a, you know, an opportunity to play at a higher level, and uh, he's thrust in the role now, and it's probably going to be for quite a – quite a while uh, so he's going to have to uh, you know continue to just you know improve on some of the things that happen throughout the game we've got to continue to rotate a little bit we might have to move some different guys around to make sure that uh, we're not wearing guys out you know he's had some injuries in his past but uh, you know what he's got good feet uh, you know he's out to prove uh, how good he can be and, and those are the type of guys you like uh, guys that are hungry that want to go out there and make a difference. On the defensive side, you've been without Jalen Graham for the last few games, and Chris Jefferson has stepped into that uh, hybrid spot and came up with another big play for you on Saturday. It just seems like when sometimes when you need a big play on defense, he's the guy that does it. He's around the football all the time. You know, that's his strength. He is a competitor as well. He loves to practice. He gets into it. Uh, he plays with emotion and passion. Uh, he's got a knack for the ball. Um, and once again, you know, that's another uh, transfer that just wanted to come and, and, and prove his worth and came from a small college. I think it was Finley College or something like that. Uh, but uh, we need him. You know, we're, we're getting thin uh, in that area in the defensive backfield. And uh, he can do a lot of things for us. We're kind of playing him at safety and at the nickel position, which is, you know, a lot more learning. So I give him credit. He studied. He wants to do well, and we're going to need him to continue to just uh, do his thing and make plays for us. You were without Reese Taylor. That meant Jamari Brown had to step in. And, uh, again, you've been a little bit thin at that cornerback spot, so uh, you might have to bubble wrap these guys, it looks like, for a little bit of, for a little while. Well, our corners had to play every snap this past game, and that's not ideal. So we've got to figure out a way to play uh, more guys and uh, throw a few of the younger ones in there and just roll with it and see if we can uh, – you know, get some use uh, out of where they're at right now. Um, but uh, those guys got tired. And while they while they played well, it wasn't their best game. We had some easy completions uh, given up that, that hurt us. Now, at the same time, we probably put them on an island too much, uh, playing that many snaps. So we just have to do a better job of being more conscious of uh, changing things up to give them a break or, or, or definitely trying to – you know, move guys around, but we just uh, don't have a whole lot of game experience at that position. You have no say in your Big Ten schedule in terms of when your bye comes, and you've got another month to play before you get to your bye. Do you change what you do in practice at all these days now that you're four weeks into an eight-week stretch? Do you, have you had to shorten yet at this season uh, or at this time of the season on practices? Well, we always alter as we get going through the season, and it's based on how our guys feel, how many guys are injured or nicked up, and uh, – you know, you got to be smart. Uh, these guys train year-round, and unfortunately, it's just a physical game. Uh, so you're not going to feel great throughout the year. And, uh, you know, sometimes you have a little luck on your side. Sometimes you don't. And we just got to continue to fight through it. But, yes, we police that very well. Uh, we try to take care of our guys as much as we can. Uh, at this point of the season, they should be calloused up a little bit and understand that uh, we'll, we'll – we'll, slightly taper back on that but uh, you know we want to be game ready and right now you know the message of the team is hey let's just uh, you know concentrate on working as hard as we can every day and uh, doing the best we can with that don't think of anything else don't look down the road don't do anything like that and then come game day we cut it loose and that's normally when we play our best when we're able to just do those simple things and not worry about the rest we're coming to you from walk-ons it's the Jeff Brom show presented by the Roman Automotive Group on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield the Big Ten Conference with a marquee matchup in West Lafayette. It's the eight ranked Gophers traveling to take on number 11, Purdue. Killed by Raven Colvin. says, this is my house. Let's go match point one more time. Match point number five. <laughs> Opportunity here. Where do they go? In the middle. Coleman. Got it. It's toughness. It's guts. It's that nastiness, okay, that we're going to play with. It was a really good, really good win for us. There's no doubt about it. It's getting louder as we get to tip off. Let's rock and roll. The 
Washington and Square with Green. They go with Wall at that G Arena. It is better than Fog Allen. It is better than Cameron. One of the toughest places in the Big Ten to come get a victory. You ask any player who's played here. Mackey is the loudest gym I've ever been in. Really, it's ridiculous. Like, you just, you can't hear anything. Mackey Arena is it's literally the loudest place I've ever been in my life. You know, I'll, I'll take that to the grave. Mackey Arena is the hardest place to play. What can you say about this environment? The intro alone got me off my seat. This place could absolutely blow its time. This is the one venue where they have to have more of a read and react offense. This, this atmosphere is as good as there is in America. Maybe the best I've ever been in rivals anything I've ever seen. And the paint crew on both sides enjoy what should be the best atmosphere you will see. The Roman Automotive Group is supporting your Boilermakers as the presenting sponsor of the Jeff Brown Show and proud partner of Purdue Athletics. Roman Automotive Group, Boiler Up and Hammer Down. We're going to get to the phone lines in just a minute. Let's check in first on Facebook. We've got... Hillsdale, Michigan, Gulfport, Mississippi, 12 Mile, Indiana, Leopold, Indiana, Boonville, Indiana, uh, St. Louis, Missouri, Cumberland, Indiana, Danville, Kentucky. And we want to send a special shout out. Jane says she is watching during Hurricane Ian in Orlando, Florida. So we're hoping her electricity holds out a little bit longer so she can get the full show in. But our thoughts are with the people down there right now facing uh, Hurricane Ian. Uh, let's get to the phone lines. Don is calling in from Indianapolis tonight. Go ahead, Don. Yeah, good evening, Coach. Uh, let's bring home a win uh, Saturday against Minnesota because I'm tired of losing to them. But I got two questions. Uh, what does uh, Aiden O'Connell have to improve on at quarterback to go to the next level? And my second question, have you figured out on Michael Finneran uh, what, what he's doing wrong kicking? Because he's not kicking like he did last year. Thank you. Okay, well, thanks for the call, Don. You know, with, with Aiden, uh, right now it's about getting him healthy. Um, you know, anytime you have a quarterback, he has a lot of experience. We know what his strengths are. He's a really good passer, and he has to show those strengths. He's got to be accurate. He's got to make good decisions. He's got to lead us to victories. Uh, you know, you can only improve upon your, your athleticism so much. But, you know, what he has to occasionally, you know, get some yards for us if it's not there. And he just has to become a, the best overall quarterback he can. And uh, playing experience is what matters, playing really good opponents. You know, he had a great half of the year at the end of year, excuse me, at the end of the year last year. Uh, but he's got to continue to get better. And that's what he's got to work on is just uh, do that every day. And as far as Mitchell Finneran, you know what, Mitchell had a really good year last year. He did have a little bit of a slump in the middle of the season. He, he got out of it. Uh, he's been a little nicked up, so he hasn't kicked as much. Uh, and he has struggled the last two games. Uh, and it's not like him. He's kind of mishit the ball, hadn't hit it in the meat, meat of his foot. So we've gone back this week, and uh, we've had more pressure kicks with the rush around him. Uh, I think maybe sometimes that might be getting in his head, uh, just some bodies flying around. Uh, maybe not. I don't know. But we've... We really just try to concentrate on the fundamentals and maybe have a few more uh, live reps, uh, so to speak, just so he can be used to it because he just uh, hasn't been his normal self. When you get into games, Jeff, like you had Saturday night where it comes down to the final possession, you need players on both sides of the ball to make plays. And I thought it was a really heady play. We're going to have Jacob Wahlberg on the show a little bit later, but... You know, we couldn't tell on the quarterback sneak. Florida Atlantic was fourth and one. They needed to get a first down to keep the drive alive and keep the game alive. And there was a big scrum. And as we've seen in the past few years, the officials let that play go on and on and on before they blew the whistle. And they never did blow it. And finally, when, when Perry reached the football out forward, uh, Jacob just swatted it out of his hands. Well, it was really heady play. I thought we did a good job of stuffing uh, that quarterback sneak. Nowadays, you never know when they're going to call forward progress or not. Uh, they, sometimes they let it ride. Sometimes they blow it. Uh, I'm sure in that situation, they were just going to let it ride until he fell all the way to the ground. And because of that, he tried to twist and spin. And Jacob was aware enough to knock that ball out. And then um, uh, Sanusi was aware enough to pick it up and run. And it was just a huge play for us. And that's really what you teach your guys is, you know what, we talked about it before the game and all week, is we're going to have to play to the end. And if anyone doesn't think this is going to go down to the wire, then you're really – uh, cheating yourself and, and you're misleading yourself. That's just how football is, and that's exactly what happened. So I give our guys credit. They played hard. Uh, would we have liked to play better? Yeah, we would have. Uh, but you know what? You know, some some days you you execute really well. Other days you make some mistakes. So uh, they fought to the end. That's what they've shown all year long. 
That's been their strength, and we have to build on that strength and just try to get better every week. Got a question here on Facebook. Kylie from the Ross Aid Brigade wants to know how the student section has compared to previous years. I think we've had great student sections in the past, but it's hard to imagine a better one than the one we've got right now. Well, that's a good question. And, uh, you know, those, those guys have definitely represented. Um, it's noticeable. Uh, when, you, when you take the field for warm-ups, you know, normally a lot of the stadium's not – full, but boy, their, their area is already full, and uh, they're showing out, and uh, they're loud, they're into it, uh, they get to the game early, uh, and they're a big part of any success we have. So I know our players see that, that means a lot to them, uh, it's great fan support, couldn't get any better than that, and we want to do our part and try to do the best job we can to win games to make it fun for all. Isaac from West Lafayette points out the attendance in the first three home games better than 57,000 for Penn State, 53,000 plus for Indiana State, 55 plus for Florida Atlantic, and the Nebraska game because it's family day weekend is already sold out. So uh, fans only have chances to buy tickets for two more home games this season. Better get un get your tickets now. That's right. That's great. Well, you know what? That that, that that's great and. Uh you know, I think that's a credit to our football team. They're competitive. Uh, they, they play hard-nosed football. And like I said, while we would love to win every game, and that's the goal, you know, we've been right in every, every one, uh, and we want to continue to build on that. I think as long as our guys are competing hard and we've given ourselves a chance to win the fourth quarter, uh, you know, that's what fans want to see. They want to see really competitive football at the highest level against really good football teams. And, you know, moving forward, starting this week, you know, we're going to play high caliber teams and uh, we're going to have to, you know, improve and get better uh, to kind of hang in there and get this thing to the fourth quarter. But that's what uh, college football is all about. And I know our guys are going to work hard. All right. More with the head coach after this. It's the Jeff Brom Show presented by Rorman Automotive Group on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Our Boilermakers have always been what unite us. To this hallowed field, we return each fall to be a part of something special. We've seen legends born and moments etched in time. Wide open! Touchdown, Seth Morales! Holy Toledo! Thomas steps away, Coleman football! For nearly a century, Ross Aid Stadium has been the home of Purdue football. As we forge ahead, we have a rare opportunity to fortify the legacy of future generations of faithful Boilermakers. Together, we will guarantee the passion you have for the old golden black will endure for years to come. Let the carnage and the chaos continue. How about the Boilermakers? Boiler up, friends. The time is now. Saturday. No reason you should go out there and cut it loose. Look at this place. The energy here is electric. Welcome to West Lafayette, folks. This should be a thriller. Welcome back to the Jeff Brown Show. We're live at Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union. Everyone needs a little playing time. The 2022 Purdue football season is presented by Purdue Global. Purdue Global is Purdue's accredited and affordable online solution for working adults. Persistence pays off at Purdue Global. Uh, the Boilermakers will take on the Minnesota Golden Gophers Saturday at noon Eastern. And then we'll be uh, in Maryland uh, the following week. That also will be a noon Eastern kickoff. Jeff, we had a question from somebody on Facebook here. You played a night game last week, 7.30. Now you're going to adjust to an 11 a.m. kickoff time. Obviously, your, your meals have to, to adjust accordingly, but how do, you, uh, how do you prepare for an 11 o'clock kickoff? Well, it's really noon here, uh, so we've had those before, and uh, we don't mind those. You know what? Uh, 
you know, you get your, your stuff done the night before, uh, you kind of relax, you go to bed, and then you get up and have a meal and, and get yourself ready to go and get over to the stadium and play. And I think our guys uh, are, are, are great with it. Uh, gives you the chance to not sit around and wait, have to think about it all day long, but just go out there and play. So, uh, you know, we're excited about that game. A couple of questions on Facebook tonight about the running backs. And as Devin Mockaby was mentioned as one as a pass receiver. And the, another question, will you, will you throw more to the backs out of the backfield? Well, it was good that we were able to do that. I think Austin uh, was comfortable uh, getting the ball out quick. Uh, we had some outlets. We had some uh, quick swing patterns uh, where he had an opportunity to throw it. And if you throw it accurate, you can get a lot of yards. So, yes, we want to make sure we're utilizing that. Of course, Aiden loves to throw it up the field, uh, and he's going to look there first. And, um, you know, as long as it's successful, it's good. But, yes, we want to make sure we're spreading the field. Uh, the running backs have done a good job uh, – of catching the football. Actually, Devin, he did a great job catching the football, and that has not been his strength, but he really showed it in that game, so it was great to see him do that in, in live game action. You were a gunslinger as a quarterback when you played collegiately in the NFL. How do you draw that line between throwing the ball down the field and taking that occasional chance and making this the shorter and maybe um, higher percentage throw? Well, you got to be able to do both, and uh, it's important that you stretch the field enough to kind of open some things up, and, uh, you know, we normally do a pretty good job of that. And with that said, you know, a lot of those, you know, running back uh, passes behind line scrimmage, if you can throw it accurate, you can get a lot of yards with it. And, uh, you know, I used to, uh, after I left the 49ers, they brought a quarterback in by the name of Jeff Garcia, who actually ended up starting for a long time uh, when he was a backup and a CFL player. And. I remember him coming in when I was there on a trial basis and, uh, you know, it was a smaller guy, a runaround guy, wasn't a great player, and, and they cut him. And then when he came back, he played for a long time, and, and he was the king of checking the ball down to the back. Yep. I mean, every single play he was going to the back. But you know what? He played for a long time and had a lot of success, <laughs> so it can be very useful and beneficial. Well, I, I think Fran Tarkenton, a lot of his thousands of yards came on little swing passes to Chuck Foreman. So you got to sometimes take what the defense gives Without you. Without question. You know, we talked a little bit about the kicking game early in terms of Mitchell Finneran, but we've been waiting for that big punt from Jack Ansel, and we finally got it Saturday night. I think the world kind of saw what kind of right leg he's got. Well, he's gotten better, and that's good. He's worked really hard. Uh, he wants to do well. Sometimes he almost puts too, pr too much pressure on himself, which causes him to kind of overthink things. But uh, he's definitely shown in practice. I mean, he really can boom the ball when he wants to. Consistency is what we're working on, uh, the ability to do it all the time. Uh, you know, he likes to do the half rugby kick a little bit, and that's fine. Uh, but normally if he kicks straight on and he can kick a spiral, the thing travels a lot farther. So we're trying to, you know, have a mixture but also allow him to kick the ball straight ahead with a spiral because he really can kick it a long ways. We also saw a couple of pretty good kick returns, one from Charlie Jones and one from Deion Burks. And, again, that's another part of your uh, – offensive weaponry that we'd like to see more of as the Big Ten season goes along. Well, we need to, you know, gain some yards out of that, and both those guys uh, can do something with the football. Uh, this was a game where we had a big special teams advantage, and it helped us win uh, without question. We had return yardage. We did a good job across the board. I know we missed a field goal and a thing like that, but other than that, we had the advantage special teams, and uh, we needed it. Uh, so that, that group just needs to continue to work and understand how important they are. All right, we'll give the coach a break. When we come back, we'll be talking with running back Dylan Downing. It's the Jeff Brom Show presented by the Rorman Automotive Group on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. And now here's Bird. This is his game. Here's an option flip. And it's Downing. And Downing down the sideline. And Downing with a big run. Now you're motioning, motioning out to empty. Look at what that's doing to the FAU defense. It's forcing them to communicate and be, get them on their heels. On third and four, towards the end zone. That's in for six. Touchdown, Charlie Jones. And the Boilermakers are on the board. This is just my guy on your guy. Nothing, nothing too crazy about this. Just an out route. Is this four down territory here for FAU on third and ten? Just me. Let's see what play call they go with. Set up the screen in traffic. That's Western. He is popped immediately by Jamari Brown. Seven seconds to go, and with that, Purdue is one and two instead of possibly three and zero. Oh. And now here is Downing with a great run. Downing down the sideline. He's out of bounds near the forty. On first down, wide open is Mockaby. Well designed play, and Mockaby is shoved down near the thirty. Sometimes you just want to throw it to a big body. 
second down. Burton looking for it. Wonderful throw, phenomenal catch. Advantage of this field position in these penalties if you're Purdue. It's Downing up the middle. Downing driving for the goal line, and he's in. Touchdown, Purdue. The tables have turned. Second down and five. It's Downing again. Big hole. Downing makes a cut. First down near midfield. Against the Gophers. On first and goal. Nothing there for Mobley. No holding, no DPI. On third and goal, Perry hit into traffic, deflected and intercepted. Here comes Jefferson again. Jefferson did this against Penn State. Jefferson still up and wrapped up in the 35-yard line. Chris Jefferson, the D2 All-American. He transfers into Purdue. They didn't know how big of a piece he would be at this defense, but he's been a huge piece of the Purdue defense to start the season. He had a pick six earlier against Penn State. To go with Payne Durham. Yeah. With the back of the end zone, and that is caught for a touchdown. What a catch by T.J. Shipping. What a catch, what a throw. Hey, get, look, oh, it looked like he got that first one down. I think but Purdue's matching their personnel. Look at that box. Look at, look at what you see. Perry, Perry trying. And now the ball came out, it's a live ball. It's recovered by Sanusi Kane. Kane came away with it. It's time for the Pro Boilers feature where we look at how former Purdue student athletes are doing in their professional sports careers. Pro Boilers is presented by Indiana Kitchen Premium Pork Products. Get to know us at indianakitchen.com. Both our Pro Boilers and Indiana Kitchen are boiler made. Lots of Boilermakers in the NFL. We'll highlight a few this week. Anthony Brown with the Dallas Cowboys had seven tackles and broke up a pass in the Cowboys' Monday night win over the New York Giants. George Karloftis playing for the Chiefs in Lucas Oil Stadium. Four tackles, but the Chiefs lost to the Colts. Xander Horvath, Los Angeles Chargers, had a special teams tackle. Did not carry the ball this week as the Chargers lost to Jacksonville. And Raheem Mostert had uh, 65 all-purpose yards for the Dolphins as they knocked off the Buffalo Bills to stay undefeated on the season. Joined by Dylan Downing. Dylan is a junior who comes to us from Carmel by way of UNLV. Uh, let's start with the Carmel's part of it. Uh, state championship football team, 6A title. What do you remember most about that state title? Uh, the team, those are my buddies. Um, be able to go out there and get a state championship was that with them, and uh, it meant a lot. Were you a one-way player, or did you play both sides on the, on the ball? Just one way. All right, running back all the way. Yep, and a little receiver. So how did a guy from Carmel, Indiana, wind up in Las Vegas to play his college football? Um, I don't know. It, uh, it really <laughs> came out of nowhere. I didn't really have anything coming out of, coming out of high school, and um, they called me, and I just took the shot. What's it like to play collegiately in Las Vegas? I mean, there, there are, Dylan, a few distractions in that city. Were you able to kind of focus on football? Oh, yeah. I, uh, I stayed focused, and uh, it was different for sure because we're playing in a $1.8 billion facility with the, the Las Vegas Death Star, they call it. It was, it was an experience <laughs> for sure. Uh, what led you then back to the state of Indiana to play? I wanted to play Big Ten football. And I wanted to do it at Purdue. So. How, how did you make that contact? And how did that, uh, when, when you're in Las Vegas and you want to get back and play at Purdue, how does that happen? I, uh, I had Coach Barclay's number off of, uh, from high school. So I called him and I was like, is there any way that I could play for you guys? And he gave me the spot and went from there. Uh, you came and played some last season. Uh, played 13 games, in fact, and had a touchdown against Indiana. It's got to be a little special to get your first touchdown against an in-state rival. I'm guessing at Carmel you had a lot of friends that went down south to Bloomington, so that had to be a little sweet. Yeah, we call that Carmel number two down there, so <laughs> it was really, really nice to get that touchdown against them. Uh, talk about your transformation, Dylan, in the offseason, because uh, the coaches have talked about that you've transformed your body, you've gotten faster, faster. Uh, conscious decision I assume to do that what, what brought that about and how did you do it uh, I wasn't moving the way I wanted to last year and so that was kind of my focal point for the off season. Um I worked with the strength staff and the nutritionist and all that we got a food plan and uh, 
and the weight program and everything like that. And we were getting faster in the off season. So really, I just used my resources that they gave me, and I, I took it and I ran. You know, I think a lot of people don't understand that aren't in the football program. You've got a lot of you got weight trainers, but you also have nutritionists to make sure that you're eating the right stuff. Uh, did you have to make a lot of changes to your diet, or was it more uh, more on the workout side, or a combination of both? It was a combination of both. Um, more explosive movements in the workouts and then making sure, uh, making the little substitutes in my food that um, substitute less calories out. So, yeah. Is there anything that you weren't, you were, you were eating before that you're not eating now that you really miss? Steak. <laughs> so no steak? Yeah, no steak. And uh, well, I, sometimes like a celebratory steak. Or uh, there like you that, go. There you go. Try to keep red meat out. So you get a couple touchdowns up, up north this week and wait, might break out a steak next you week. Might have to, yeah. Uh, talk about playing. We talked in, in, with Coach Brown in the last segment about playing in front of the home crowd. It's been a great home crowd this season. Uh, I would imagine, too, you've got a lot of family and friends that come up for the games. What has that been like for you? It's great. They show out every week, and um, I thank them for that. And it's, it's great to be able to put on a, put on a show for them. Talk about, foot, uh, talk about life away from football, your major here, and what you plan to do once your football days are done. Um, I'm an organizational leadership major, and I plan to go into real estate after football. Uh, what is your uh, running back room like? Uh, you guys have to, I would imagine you spend so much time together. You've got a pretty tight group. Uh, what are the personalities like in that room with Coach Barkley? Got a little bit of everything in there. Uh, got fun. We're, it's a fun time. We, uh, we joke around, but when it's time to get serious, we get serious and we get the work done. So if I brought your fellow running back mates in, how would they describe Dylan Downing? Mm, I don't know. You're going to have to ask them because uh, it, it depends on the day, how, how we're feeling, and uh, what we got to do that day. Uh, you're going to head up for uh, the three of the next four games on the road, and we know that the atmospheres in the Big Ten are going to be crazy. I'm sure they'll have a big crowd at Minnesota. It's their homecoming on Saturday, and then you go to Maryland, Wisconsin, uh, Playing on the big stage, what was that like for you for the first time last season, going into some of these large facilities? It was nice. Um, in high school, you know, watching on, uh, watching on TV, seeing that, and actually being able to go out there and play in those environments, it was really cool to bring it to life. Well, Dylan, congratulations on a great season so far. Let's uh, see if we can get, find the end zone a few more times and uh, look forward to seeing a big win on Saturday against the Gophers. Yep, let's do it. Boiler up. All right, when we come back, we'll be talking with Jacob Wahlberg. It's the Jeff Brom Show presented by the Rorman Automotive Group on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. This is his game. Here's an option flip, and is Downing, and Downing down the sideline, and Downing with a big run. Now you're motioning, motioning out to empty. Look at what that's doing to the FAU defense. It's forcing them to communicate and be, get them on their heels. On third and four, towards the end zone. That's in for six. Touchdown, Charlie Jones. And the Boilermakers are on the board. This is just my guy on your guy. Nothing, nothing too crazy about this. Just an out route. Is this four down territory here for FAU on third and ten? Just me. Let's see what play call they go with. Set up the screen in traffic. That's Western. He is popped immediately by Jamari Brown. Seven seconds to go. And with that, Purdue is one and two instead of possibly three and zero. Oh. And now here is Downing with a great run. Downing down the sideline. He's out of bounds near the forty. On first down, wide open is Mockaby. Well-designed play, and Mockaby is shoved down near the 30. Sometimes you just want to throw it to a big body. On second down, Burton looking for the end zone. you got to take advantage of this field position in these penalties if you're Purdue. It's Downing up the middle. Downing driving for the goal line, and he's in. Touchdown, Purdue. Against the Gophers. On first and goal. Nothing there for Mobley. No holding, no DPI. On third and goal, Perry hit into traffic, deflected and intercepted. Here comes Jefferson again. Jefferson did this against Penn State. Jefferson still up and wrapped up in the 35-yard line. Bringing in some extra beef, a 300-pounder to go with Payne Durham. Yeah. With the back of the end zone, and that is caught for a touchdown. Show. We're live at Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union, where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. The Rorman Automotive Group is supporting your Boilermakers as the presenting sponsor of the Jeff Brown Show and proud partner of Purdue Athletics. 
Rorman Automotive Group, boiler up and hammer down. We're joined by Jacob Wahlberg. He's a junior from Muskegon, Michigan. Had a big play on the Saturday's game against Florida Atlantic. We'll get to that shortly. But uh, you come from a football-playing family. Your dad, college football player at Grand Valley State. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What's, what position did he play? Linebacker. So you, you followed in his footsteps. Yes, sir. Now, in high school, were you a two-way player or strictly defensive? Yeah, I played tight end also. Did you have one a preference one over the other? Um, I liked them both, but I guess the linebacker probably was my uh, preference. What led you then to, to come down to West Lafayette? Um, I just, you know, Coach Brom and, uh, you know, the rest of the coaching staff just made it feel like home, and uh, I felt like I fit in well here. Uh, you've paid your dues. You played a little bit uh, your first year. You played a little bit on special teams last year, but I was talking to Dylan Downing. He got his first college touchdown against Indiana. You had your first career interception against Indiana. Yes, sir. Did you understand the magnitude of that rivalry when you came down across the state line? Uh, I don't think initially I did, but, uh, you know, quickly uh, – you know, being around the area and stuff, it uh, quickly sank in how uh, big of a deal it was. So, You're getting more and more playing time this season at the linebacker spot. Uh, talk about your comfort level playing as, as you're now in year three in the program. Yeah, uh, no, it's a whole different ball game, you know, this year as far as knowing the playbook and being comfortable with the calls. So it's uh, definitely up my game. Walk me through that last series. Florida Atlantic is down two. They've got the ball. If they don't get on and go down and score any kind of a score, whether it's a field goal or a touchdown, they're going to beat you. Uh, they've got a fourth and one, and you see a big scrum and a quarterback sneak. Walk us through the play from what you saw. Yeah, well, uh, we saw they were going to sneak it, um, and we uh, got everyone aligned. And then uh, we had him initially stopped, and then he uh, put his arm across trying to you know reach for the first down, and I just was able to hit it out, so – just complete instinct at that point. Yeah, just saw the ball and saw his arm, and it was an opportunity. Uh, they let, and we were talking with Coach Brom. It was pretty apparent they were not going to blow the whistle there because there was still movement, and he was still trying to fight. So if you don't right. knock that ball away, it's the first down, right? Because he had reached it, looked like over yeah, the line it, it at was, that point. It was close. It was close. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and it had to be a good feeling for you, too, to see your guy pick it up and, yeah, and run no the doubt. ball the other way. No doubt. No doubt. When I saw Nusi pick it up, I was uh, fired up. Uh, you've been in some situations like we're going to be this week at Minnesota and a few weeks at Wisconsin and on down the road where you're playing in some of the big arenas in college football. Uh, the adrenaline level go goes up a little bit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, you know, a crazy atmosphere. Um, you know, the next couple game, next couple weeks, you know, like you said, we're all away and it'll uh, be a good opportunity for us. Uh, growing up in Muskegon, Michigan, was there a favorite team or player that you rooted for growing up? Um, not particularly. I just like watching college football and, you know, being around the game. Uh, I asked Dylan what the running back room is like. To Tell us about the linebacker room. Who are the, who are the big personalities in that room? <laughs> um, I would say KD, definitely. Uh, Kieran Douglas, he's, uh, he's a character. He's funny. Uh, he keeps, a, you know, keeps the room on our toes. Now, he and Samisi have been around, it seems like, forever. Do you have any grandpa jokes for Samisi, who's now in his seventh season at playing college football? Yeah, we do for KD and Samisi. Coach Elson's always, uh, you know, giving them, giving them uh, stuff about it. But, uh, you know, it's funny. It's fun. What is, Coach, what is Coach Elson's style both on the field and then when you get him in the meeting room? Yeah, no, he's a – he really cares about relationships with uh, his players, and uh, he tries to build that and create that culture in our room. Uh, so that's helped a lot. And, um, you know, he's not a rah-rah type of guy. He's a coach you up and, uh, you know, let you know when you make mistakes, but he's going to love you up when, you know, you make plays. So, he's, you know, he's a great guy, and I love playing for him. The goal for any student athlete when they come in is to have success in their chosen sport but also get their academics taken care of, and Jacob's done that. You already have your Purdue degree, correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Working on a master's degree. Uh, yes, sir. What, what is life going to be like after football then for Jacob Wahlberg? What do you want to do next? That's a good question. That's a great question. <laughs> you don't have to have an answer to yeah. you under. I don't think I do, but, um, you know, we'll see when it gets there. Coaching at all in your thoughts, or is it, do you think you're going to get away from football once it's over? Uh, I don't think I'll ever get away from it. You know, I love the game. It's, uh, it'll always be a part of my life. So, you know, we'll see what happens. All right, lastly, when you're lying in bed the night before a big game, uh, do, you, do you visualize what's going to happen the next day? How do you prepare, especially when you've got an, an 11 a.m. kickoff up yeah. in Minneapolis? How do you get ready the night before? No, you definitely visualize yourself making plays. Uh, we say it in our room all the time. Go to bed, visualize yourself making the plays. So. Well, congratulations on the play you made on Saturday night. You sent a lot of people home happy and good luck the rest yes, of the sir. season. Thank you so much. All right, we'll have the head coach back with us in a couple of minutes. It's the Jeff Prom Show presented by the Rorman Automotive Group on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. We open up the big 
Ten Conference with a marquee matchup in West Lafayette. It's the eight ranked Gophers traveling to take on number 11, Purdue. Killed by Raven Colvin. Clayton says, this is my house. Let's go match point one more time. Match point number five. <laughs> Opportunity here, where do they go? In the middle, Coleman, got it! It's toughness, it's guts, it's that nastiness, okay, that we're gonna play with. It was a really good, really good win for us. There's no doubt about it. It's getting louder as we get to tip off. Let's rock and roll. Listen to this boy with Bill. They go with Wall about the arena. It is better than Fogel. It is better than Cameron. One of the toughest places in the Big Ten to come get a victory. You ask any player who's played here. Mackey is the loudest gym I've ever been in. Really, it's ridiculous. Like you just, you can't hear anything. Mackey Arena is it's literally the loudest place uh, I've ever been in my life. Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll take that to the grave. Mackey Arena is the hardest place to play. What can you say about this environment? The intro alone got me off my seat. This place could absolutely blow its top. This is the one venue where they have to have more of a read and react offense. This, this atmosphere is as good as there is in America. Maybe the best I've ever been in. Rivals anything I've ever seen. And the paint crew on both sides enjoy what should be the best atmosphere you will see. Welcome back to Walk-Ons. Uh, Coach, we were just looking. Uh, looks like Jacob got himself a hamburger, and I think it was piled up to the ceiling, wasn't it? That, that's a little bit of a snack well, here at Walk-Ons. He may not, may not have to eat breakfast after eating that hamburger. <laughs> that thing was huge. Uh, let's talk a little bit about these Minnesota Golden Gophers. They are number 21 in the country. They're 4-0 uh, they're four and coming in, and just a few numbers. Offensively, number one in the nation in time of possession and first downs, number two in the nation in rushing offense, number three in the nation total offense, number 11 in scoring offense. Defensively, number one total defense, number one first downs allowed, number two scoring defense, number two pass defense, number three rushing defense. They've played out of their minds the first four weeks of the season. That's a pretty good football team up there. Well, they have, and uh, that uh, presents some, some issues and some problems and some challenges, but uh, that's why you play the game. Uh, but I give them credit. Uh, when you watch their video this year, um, this might be the best Minnesota team we've faced to date. Uh, they're a complete team. Defensively, they're playing as good as I've ever seen them. And, uh, you know, you could say, well, maybe they didn't play great teams, uh, you know, throughout their – first four games, but when you beat Michigan State the way they did at their place, Michigan State didn't score to the very last play of the game against their, their reserves. That means they're really good on defense. Yeah. And uh, they just, they're big up front. They got really big physical linebackers. Their, their secondary is experienced and they make you earn it. And, uh, you know, we're really going to have to execute and do a lot of things well. And and then you get to the other side and they're, man, they got a big offensive line. They got running backs. Uh, they control the clock. Uh, they're going to run it and 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 then just try to play action every now and then to keep you honest. But they limit the possessions. And uh, when you're facing those teams, it's really a priority to really execute early on to figure out a way to get a lead uh, because that's the only way you're going to take them out of their game is if you can get a lead. And uh, that's got to be the formula. And if you're not able to do that, it's going to be a long, long day uh, where you're just going to have, have to hang in there. But I know our guys are play hard uh, you know, they've had a good week to this point. And we understand it's a challenge, uh, especially going on the road. But uh, you know what? That's why they play the game. Uh, they lost their leading receiver a couple of weeks ago in Chris Ottman Bell, but they've been able to make up for it. And part of the reason is they just ground people to death. Mohamed Ibrahim, their running back, 60-year guy, has had 100 yards plus in 13 straight games, overcoming an injury from last season. And he's a guy, he's a load running the ball well not only is he a really good running back but I give him credit uh, you know he, he tore his ACL last year and to come back this fast and to play at this level is a credit to him uh, it just doesn't happen that that fast we've had multiple 
things where it's taken a little bit longer. He has come back and he is full speed and, uh, you know, he's still got that confidence and that ability to run the football with physicality. And uh, he's just a really good player. You know, you're looking, again, for some weaknesses as you look at their stats, and I noticed they'd only punted for an average of like 35 yards, and you think, well, maybe that's something you can take advantage of. They've only punted three times all season in four games. Well, I know. In the last game against Michigan State, they didn't punt at all. Uh, so that tells you right there that they're playing efficient football. They're confident. They believe in what they're doing. And we're going to just have to, you know, come in there and uh, swing for the fence and see what we can do. Uh, it's a neat stadium. We haven't had a lot of success up there, and, and, and I think it's the first time we're going to go up there that our teeth won't be chattering, so we're kind of excited about that. It's supposed to be a beautiful day for football on Saturday. Well, that part will be good, yes. We've been up there in some, some cold days, and uh, we have not performed very well in really cold days, uh, so this will be much, much more uh, pleasant weather. You know, you get into the Big Ten schedule now, Jeff, and it seems like uh, we, we talk coming in, you're getting into the most physical part of your schedule now. You look at the teams, uh, starting with this one, you got Maryland, uh, Nebraska, Wisconsin coming up, and these are teams that are going to try and pound the football on you until you can stop them. And that's what most of the conference is known for, and, uh, you know, we know what we, we're getting ourselves into, and that's why we got to play much more efficient football. Um, We've got to eliminate as many mistakes as we can. We've got to learn from the mistakes we've made earlier on, which I thought we made some progress. We had one or two things happen that I didn't like. But we've got to control that aspect. I just think penalties is, cr is crucial to get better at that area. Winning the turnover battle. You know, we had two turnovers the last game that, that uh, you know, we don't want to happen. And those are just small things that we have to gain advantage when you're playing that type of uh, schedule with really, you know, physical teams that want to control the football. So... All the small things are going to matter, and uh, we have to play very well. All right, our final segment of the Jeff Brom Show presented by the Roman Automotive Group is coming up on the Purdue Global Sports Network from their field. Our Boilermakers have always been what unite us. To this hallowed field, we return each fall to be a part of something special. We've seen legends born and moments etched in time. Wide open, get it in, touchdown Purdue! Seth Morales, holy Toledo! Thomas, steps away, Coleman football, and got it! Beasley rushes free for the Purdue touchdown! It's pandemonium, coach, hope for the year! Hope we have a whole lot more of these. It's a great win for Purdue. For nearly a century, ross Aid Stadium has been the home of Purdue football. As we forge ahead, we have a rare opportunity to fortify the legacy of future generations of faithful Boilermakers. Together, we will guarantee the passion you have for the old golden black will endure for years to come. Let the carnage and the chaos continue. How about the Boilermakers? Boiler up, friends. The time is now. Saturday. No reason you should go out there and cut it loose. Look at this place. The energy here is electric. Welcome to West Lafayette, folks. This should be a thriller. The 2022 Purdue football season is presented by Purdue Global. Purdue Global is Purdue's accredited and affordable online solution for working adults. Persistence pays off at Purdue Global. Let's get a last run through here on uh, Facebook. Austin, Texas checking in tonight. Our good friend Diane there. Fort Wayne is with us. Swamico, Wisconsin. We've got Idaho checking in. New York City. A couple of Pennsylvanias. Downingtown and Littlestown, Pennsylvania. Murrieta, California. And I believe that's it. Uh, let's talk about this uh, game again coming up with Minnesota and what you try to do. You're, you're going to try, obviously, to get a lead. You try to do that every time, but... Uh, they really, their time of possession is more than 40 minutes a game. How, 
is there any way to disrupt their offense once they get it rolling? Because you mentioned they just bludgeon, 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 and then they throw it over the top of you. Well, you've got to figure out the right recipe and the right balance. So uh, if you think you're just going to play vanilla defense against them, it, it normally has not worked. Uh, they do a really good job. Uh, but at the same time, if you're, if you're going to go overboard and load them all up in there, they're going to throw a few shots over your head. So you've got to balance that to a certain degree, but you've got to be aggressive in your approach. You may have to have the ability to disguise a little bit uh, and do some things because they call it from the sideline after a lot of false cadences because they're stand up there forever making sure they see the defense and get in the right play. Uh, so that's just going to you know, be something that uh, we, we got to do a good job with. And um, you know, figuring out a way to get some stops early on is going to be crucial. You've been in a situation, Jeff, now three times at the end of a game with your defense on the field this year where you had to stop them. And, and after the Penn State game, you thought maybe you had played a little bit too soft in the uh, Syracuse game, maybe at times too aggressive. Were you happy with the mix at the end of the Florida Atlantic game? Because you, you got your team off the field on that one. Well, uh, without question, the, the last scenario uh, when we had the lead and uh, they had to drive to score, I thought we made a lot of great calls. Uh, they were safe. They were secure. We had the perfect balance, you know, in fourth and one to load in the box and doing some things. But other than that, we were playing coverage and making them earn it down the field. And, uh, you know, they only needed a field goal, so it wasn't like they had to go too far. So you just got to be really uh, confident in what you're doing, have it planned ahead of time, and, and, and uh, you know, make some plays. But I do think our guys, uh, you know, understood the plan. We were, we were better at that. And like I said, we, we, we could have – you know, done some things different throughout the game, but uh, we did do a good job situationally. Lastly, we've gone almost this entire show, and we haven't mentioned Charlie Jones. Charlie Jones is still leading the nation in reception and continues to do a great job for you. Well, he is. He just makes uh, all the catches and uh, has done a really good job of uh, finding a way to get open. You know, he has some David Bell in him by the fact that he this game he made some contested catches, guys that were guarding him tight. Uh, he found a way to just make the catch, which we needed. Uh, you know, his two touchdown catches were – we're tightly guarded, and he made really good uh, catches and a good throw from Austin. And even the uh, touchdown by TJ, the guy was all over him, guarding him tight. So I just think our guys uh, just need to continue to work, and we've got to figure out, you know, as many ways as we can to score points and uh, be as efficient, efficient as we can. Jeff, good luck this week against the Gophers. Okay, thank you. All right, we want to thank our producer, Jacob Smith, tonight. Our engineer, as always, Wes Scott. Hunter Massengill providing the video for us here at Walk-Ons. Again, the Boilermakers and the Minnesota Golden Gophers will kick it off at Huntington Bank Stadium. That'll be a noon kickoff Eastern time. We'll be on the air at 11 Eastern, and then the following game against Maryland will also be a noon Eastern time kickoff. Want to thank the coach. Want to thank Dylan Downing and Jacob Wahlberg. Again, we'll be back here next week at 6.05 on Wednesday night for a next edition of the Jeff Brom Show. Until then, good night, everybody.